Hello folks, welcome to Skywatch Media News. Uh, this is the first week of October 2017. Our focus now turns to a series of worrisome events along the Ring of Fire that are pointing to a potential catastrophe in our near future. Considering recent events including three devastating Atlantic hurricanes, destructive earthquakes in Mexico, and the apocalyptic wildfires that are sweeping through the western United States, it would be prudent for the common person to establish basic provisions in the hope of surviving these natural disasters. Earth is evolving, but the major events of recent weeks provide some clues to the changes across our planet and the dangers that each event poses to our safety and our well-being. Right now, all eyes are focused on the Pacific Ring of Fire as there is a growing list of volcanic eruptions and uh, tectonic tremors that are happening across this region. For those not too familiar with this region of the world, the Ring of Fire is a massive circle of volcanoes along the perimeter of the Pacific Ocean Basin. Made up of uh, 452 volcanoes, the Ring of Fire marks the edges of a, a tectonic zone where the Pacific Ocean floor rises to form the western edge of North and South America and the islands along the eastern edge of Asia and Australia. It spans nearly 25,000 miles in distance and is the world's primary source of earthquakes and volcanic activity. Here is what we know so far about the potential dangers that are awaiting those who dwell in these areas. An unprecedented eruption of Ambi, an island in the South Pacific nation of Vanuatu, is taking place in the increasingly active eruption of the Manaro volcano as shown in this video clip. On the Indonesian island of Bali, 144,000 people have been taken to shelters after a code red alert was implemented for Mount Agung, where an explosive eruption is imminent. In North America, two horrendous earthquakes in Mexico in September have caused widespread destruction and mounting fear of more earth-shattering events to come. In the wake of the devastating earthquakes in Mexico City and in the Central Valley, the volcanic activity at the nearby Papacatapeto volcano has increased significantly. A number of other volcanoes have also sprung to life, 
such as in Costa Rica and in Japan. Swarms of earthquakes have been detected at Yellowstone, numbering more than 2,300 since June. The last volcanic eruption in this region was 70,000 years ago. There are reports surfacing that NASA plans to drill into the supervolcano to release heat that is building up around the caldera. But such a project is very dangerous as it could trigger an eruption with dire consequences. Not far from Yellowstone, the state of Idaho has experienced a series of earthquakes and tremors since September 2nd, when a magnitude 5.3 earthquake hit near Soda Springs, which was felt as far away as Salt Lake City. Within the past year, Idaho, which is rarely associated with earthquakes, has been jolted by over 300 of them raising serious concerns that the intense seismic activity could lead to the possibility of an eruption of the supervolcano. Particular interest has been placed along the Cascadia subduction zone which is capable of producing a megathrust earthquake of magnitude 9 or higher along Washington State, Oregon, and British Columbia. Megathrust earthquakes occur when enough energy has accumulated in the locked zone of the fault to cause a rupture known as a megathrust earthquake. The magnitude of this type of earthquake is proportional to the length of the rupture along the fault. The Cascadia subduction zone, which forms the boundary between the Juan de Fuca and the North American plates, is a very long sloping fault that stretches from mid-Vancouver Island to Northern California. Scientists have discovered that major earthquakes happen here on average about every 240 years. The last major Cascadia earthquake was 315 years ago. One of the most dangerous volcanoes is the Popocatapetl volcano which has entered a phase of increasing volcanic activity. After nine explosions on September 28th, the Popocatapetl volcano erupted again six times on September 29th and three times on September 30th. This chart shows the current volcanic phase of the Popocatapetl volcano with 18 explosions in the last three days. Here is a video showing the explosion that occurred on September 30th.
Officials are quick to note that they believe that there is no direct link between the 7.1 earthquake on September 19th and the current eruptions of the volcano. But the validity of their statement is one that is questionable at the very least. The volcanic unrest is increasing around the world as noted by Volcano Discovery. A series of 600 low frequency tremors not seen in many years which are associated with fluids inside the volcanic system is striking under the Lama volcano since the 1st of October. While in Peru, the Sabancaya volcano explodes at least 45 times per day for the past two weeks, with ash and gas clouds reaching high into the atmosphere. There has been eight consecutive Atlantic hurricanes of the 2017 hurricane season. The last time the Atlantic encountered this many consecutive hurricanes was in the year 1893. Hurricane Franklin became the first named storm of this year on August the 9th. During the weeks that followed, three of the eight hurricanes, including Harvey, Irma, and Maria, reached Category 4 or 5 status, and all of them made landfall, which sets a record for landfall of consecutive storms. Here are some very interesting statistics. Harvey hit Texas as a Category 4 storm in August, with rain accumulation that surpassed any recorded cyclone in the history of the continental United States. Throughout Irma's development, the destructive eye wall of the storm maintained intensity above 180 miles per hour for an astonishing 37 hours, longer than any other storm in Atlantic history, making it one of the most powerful Atlantic storms ever recorded. The Category 5 winds traveled a distance equivalent to almost half the United States or a straight line from Washington, D.C. to Wichita, Kansas, as shown in this map. When combined, Irma and Maria ended up covering more than 1,500 miles of territory while holding the highest rating for Earth's strongest storms. This video shows the impressive progression of catastrophic flooding that occurred in the wake of Hurricane Maria while devastating the Caribbean islands. The evolution of the precipitation levels were followed by NASA's GPM satellites. According to the data, devastating floods occurred in the Leeward Islands as well as in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. In recent weeks, the ocean has receded from beaches along the Atlantic coast of South America, Europe, Africa, and North America. Scientists have said that the unprecedented phenomena is due to recent storms that are sucking up all of the waters in the Atlantic. This is, however, an event that has happened numerous times along the Atlantic coast of South America since August and it is difficult to believe that on each occasion a giant storm was responsible for these strange events. So what is really going on along these coastlines? The phenomenon started in Uruguay in August of this year and then progressed to Brazil, where the tidal retreat remains unexplained and not understood. In late September, these images were posted, which clearly shows the water receding again along the beaches of Garatuba, Brazil. But this time, there were no giant storms off the coast that were gathering up the water. No tsunami, and therefore no reason to explain the continuation of this anomalous event. So why is the water mysteriously disappearing and where is it going? It would seem that some other mysterious ocean phenomena 
is playing a major role in South America. So as the water continues to recede along the coast of the South American continent, there is no one who can explain why this is happening. If you follow the weather reports, as I do, and as many others have, then you know that climate change is running rampant. It has virtually reached a point in which its effects on the planet are becoming irreversible. We still do not know for certain what is causing these sudden and drastic changes on our planet. I have argued the point that the primary cause can be associated with the presence of a powerful source of cosmic energy in our solar system. The existence of a large celestial body or system of planets that are now wreaking havoc on the Earth, which could also explain many of the strange and anomalous events that are now happening on a global scale. However, it can also be argued that something else is at play here. It is possible that today's climate ailments are being produced by man-made engineering, what is referred to as the intentional alteration of the Earth's climate. It's a process that has happened over years of observation, and no one really knows if or when it will end. The practice of cloud seeding goes back to the 1940s with the intention of dissipating severe storms or producing precipitation. But it is believed that the intent today is to alter the world's climate rather than any weather-related event. Just recently, a complex solar halo formed in the skies over Brazil. This sky anomaly is believed to be the result of cloud seeding air pollutants, in which ice crystals form that refract and reflect light, thus creating this phenomenal sky manifestation. These cloud seeding uh, pyrotechnics are used by the government for such things as the suppression of hail, rain enhancement, and snowpack augmentation all at the risk of modifying precipitation inadvertently. As climate conditions worsen, so does the environmental fallout that is occurring from catastrophic wildfires. Every year these horrendous fires produce dangerous levels of greenhouse gases and fine particulates throughout the western United States and Canada. In 2017, wildfires have burned 8.5 million acres of land thus far, which is 2.5 million more than the previous 10-year average. Here are some discerning statistics concerning wildfires. In the state of Oregon, they saw 678,000 acres go up in flames so far in 2017, as compared to a similar figure in 2015, where more than 14 million tons of greenhouse gases were emitted into the atmosphere, that being equivalent to the carbon emissions of 3 million passenger cars. If these figures are accurate, then wildfires have played a major role in the toxic infiltration of the atmosphere and the overall health of millions of people in the western United States and in Canada. The disastrous consequences of the events happening on Earth are having a monumental effect on tens of millions of people all over the world. These events, which happen in nature, are increasing exponentially every year, and the statistics provide substantial evidence that the Earth and our atmosphere are dramatically changing. Therefore, it would be in your best interest to heed the signs and the warnings, and prepare yourself for a very tumultuous journey through a time of great uncertainty. So keep yourself informed, be mindful of your earthly surroundings at all times, and above all, keep looking to the sky.